You clicked on this video because you're ready to start to improve or develop your drum soloing ability. If that's the case, stick around. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe before you leave because we're dedicating the majority of this year to helping you do just that. For all my regulars, let's get down to business. Cue intro. All right, so I'm gonna kick this thing off with the first of four videos, four exercises that I'm gonna show you guys to do. Um, this is gonna be the first in a sub-series of videos that I'm calling progressive subdivisions. So take whatever you know up to this point about playing drum solos and just put it all aside for the time being, because we're gonna break this thing right back down, start from the ground floor. Now you guys have heard me talk about solos before and, um, and the basic underlying kind of structure underneath it, and the fact that it's really just subdivisions with a whole lot of color, right? Um, so that's, that's how we're gonna build up our ability to solo. We're gonna start with that. There is definitely an art to it later on. All right, but you get overwhelmed if I get into all of that stuff too early. So we're gonna start with the ground floor and just crawl before we start walking again. Now the basis of what I'm gonna talk about today is in a previous video that I recorded probably a year ago now called How to Develop Rock Solid Timing. If you saw that, then you're prepared for what's about to happen. If you didn't see it, take a couple minutes, check that video out. Um, just so you get a, a, an understanding of what I mean by subdivisions. And once you have all that information, this series of videos is going to start to make more sense to you. So the idea and the purpose behind these first four exercises, building blocks. All right, so we're going to build our ability to solo literally a subdivision at a time. Now, while we're doing these exercises, you're going to build the five most important components of playing any drum solo. So your improvisation, your musicality, your dynamics, your vocabulary, and your timing. All right, so this is basically how it works, man. We're going to focus on the eighth note subdivision, okay? And the idea is we're going to sit around the kit. We're going to pick a, a nice, slow, comfortable tempo, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to play eighth notes around the drums. But here's the thing, because there's a, there's a lot more to it than that. The idea is to get as creative and as musical as you possibly can with just eighth notes. Don't play anything else, all right? Just eighth notes. So you're, just, you're gonna take everything that you got, whatever level that you're at right now, and you're just gonna play eighth notes around the drums. You can do it however you want. You can play unisons, singles, um, hand and foot combinations, whatever you wanna do. But again, all you're gonna play is eighth notes. So this is gonna take away the attention from all of the other notes in the spectrum, all right? You got one letter of the alphabet to work with. So this is gonna force whatever you got in here out. Now this is a super effective way to start to build up your improvisational skills because you're gonna be making it all up, right? So we're working at a slow enough tempo where there's no pressure, okay? and you're not performing, okay? You're just doing an exercise here. So take your time, stay within those eight notes, and just play what you got in front of you. Now you can make this exercise very musical through the use of dynamics. So loud and soft. I want you to think like this. You know what I mean? Like as far as volume goes. Imagine there's a, there's a fader behind you, and every once in a while, 
push it up, bring it back, push it up, bring it back, gradually push it up again. You know what I'm saying? You're going to vary your dynamics through this whole thing with single hits, double hits, whatever. This is also going to build up your vocabulary because during this whole process, you're going to learn some new phrases, right? You're just going to be making stuff up. You might do something that you really like, play it a few more times until you remember it, and it just becomes another part of your musical vocabulary. So as far as how to play this exercise, it's very simple, man. You have an eighth note pocket. Shut all of the other subdivisions off. So if this is our tempo. All right, you're just gonna be thinking one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and two and three and four and. That is your blank canvas. You can fill those slots in the grid up with whatever you want. And that's it. So the cool thing about this exercise is that it doesn't get boring. As a matter of fact, the longer you do it, the more fun it gets. So you can literally, if you want, you can do this 15, 20 minutes at a time without even breaking a sweat. 15 minutes is going to feel like three minutes. Now, while you're actually playing this exercise, I want you to consider four important things. These are things that I want you to keep in mind the entire time, all right? Number one, the use of bar structure. Think about bar structure while you're playing. Don't just start hitting stuff at random and then decide, you know, to hit a crash whenever you feel like hitting it. Make it intentional and make your phrasing even. So you can do it however you want. Two bars, four bars, one bar, whatever you want to do. But keep the bar structure in mind when you're doing this. Second thing, of course, again, use of dynamics. Make sure you're playing loud and soft. Put as much emotion into those eighth notes as you possibly can. Third thing, which is super important, the use of space. Space is a very important and valuable tool when you're playing in general, but especially during a solo. The space that you leave between the notes is just as important as the notes themselves. So go ahead, play some stuff, let it breathe, play some more stuff, let it breathe, you know what I'm saying? Space is okay, you don't have to fill every single slot with a note. And then the fourth thing, and the final thing that I'll mention before we, uh, before we get into it, this is super important. Listen to your drums. Learn how to enjoy the sound of your drums. Sometimes you got to stand back and let them speak. You know what I'm saying? So this, for instance, this symbol here, I love this symbol to death. Sometimes I'll hit it and then I just stand back so I can listen to it decay. You know what I mean? Or I'll just tap my ride cymbal and just listen, to, just listen to what it does, that kind of thing. Your toms, if your toms are tuned really well, you're gonna to wanna to hear them. When you hit a floor tom and it sings out, just stand back and let it sing out. My 10 inch, I love the sound of my 10 inch. So, you know, I'll use that often during, um, during play. And I just like to absorb the sound of my kit because it's very much part of the solo. So, now that I've fully explained how to do this thing, I'm going to play an example for you. I'm just going to start a click and do this exact exercise so you can see it, and then afterwards, you can go do it for yourself.
So that's it. That's all there is to it, man. So hopefully that gave you an idea of just how musical you can get with just the one subdivision. And the beautiful thing about it is that you really don't need a ton of technique to do it. So if you've, if you've only been playing for two years or so, you can still do this. If you've been playing for 10 years or more, it's just going to end up being more fun for you. Now I'm going to leave this one lesson with you for a couple of weeks. It's super important that you do not get ahead of yourself, all right? I'm giving you enough time before the next lesson to, um, to really practice this as often as you can. I'm going to try to space these lessons out every two weeks. So make sure you take advantage of the time and do this as often as you can for as long as you want. Always remember, man, you're only going to get out of it what you put into it. So that's it. I'm going to leave that right there. Make sure you grab my Play Along Track album, Solo Comps for Drummers. This is going to be something we're going to be using during the course of the year. And um, there's going to be songs. I'm going to be giving you some homework, some recommended tunes to play along with later on down the road. But you can pick it up now and, uh, you know, check some of the tunes out. It's available pretty much anywhere you can download music. So check that out. Also, make sure you go check out the online merch store. I got a ton of really cool t-shirts and hoodies in there. There's a lot of new items, too, that you might want to check out. The shirts and hoodies have been selling quite nicely. Thanks to everyone that's been picking them up and sending me pics. Thanks for watching this video. Share it if you dig it. Comment and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.